invent uh, right. terrorism. So the Quran, they only invent terrorism. as I started by saying, produce terrorists. There are ways. They produce There are ways to understand the, only thing the truthfulness of a religion. And I offered so far three, two falsification tests. That's the only thing they are bringing for Brother, people. brother, please. Come on. Patience, patience. Come on. Come on. One of the falsification the tests was to produce Muslim a chapter like the Quran, which no one has ever done for the last 400 years. The second falsification test was to bring a contradiction or inconsistencies. Now, having failed to bring anything like that, if you cannot falsify the Quran, if you cannot falsify Islam, then the claim of Islam is something that you need to explore and live with, with this understanding. What is it then if it's not from Allah, our Creator? Because this is what the Quran is saying. It is from God and that is how you can demonstrate that it is not. So, himself. I want to now, I want to now wrap up so, what I've said so far and then take your questions. I began by saying in line with the last two weeks that we have talked about that this universe clearly demonstrates that there is a creator of this universe and this creator has to be one and only absolute in his oneness. Yes, so the idea of polytheism or tri unitheism or any of these any of these multiplicity of God within God is not only irrational, is not only unreasonable, it is unbelievable and unacceptable. That's what I said in the last two weeks. Today I offered the God of Moses my reasons God. of why no, people no, no. should think, reflect, and eventually verify for themselves Islam being true. My reasons why Islam is true. Because anyone can come and say, I am God, I'm a prophet of God, I'm a messenger, I am this, I am that. We are not that brainwashed or totally lost our brain cells. As intellectual, reasonable human beings, we will question, we will challenge those ideas. So when Islam says, you know what? Quran is a revelation, a guidance from your creator. And here is the evidence for this revelation. One needs to then say, actually, yes, that's a good point. If the Quran is okay, he's just making his subtle point. He can ignore him. It's another Akla, but a quiet type. Anyway, so if if the Quran says this is how the book is from God and ways to falsify it, you and I should be the first one to say, that's interesting. A book not only tells us it's from God. But it gives us the opportunity to dis disprove it. That is very reasonable. That is very scientific. That is very rational. So when the Quran, and I offered you two examples out of many, just to simplify it, because it's not very easy to talk when hecklers talking over you. Number one example, falsification test, I said, producing a book like unto it, or 10 chapters, or even a single chapter. And people were unable to do that, and are unable to do that. Number two, finding contradictions, and people are unable to do that. So having failed, having failed, in the falsification test to falsify the Quran, what is left? What is left then? It is left for our intellect to question why is it that I am not accepting this book from God? Why is it that I am not accepting this book is from God? Because I have clearly witnessed against myself the evidence that the Quran is not falsifiable. So, the role of the intellect, the role of the intellect is then 
to explore this book. And I gave you two examples again. All Muslim. Two examples from natural phenomena. One about the stars, the piercing bright stars with the sounds of hammering. And the second example of inter-oceanic waves. For you to reflect and ask yourself, about that. What is it that I want Who? to convince Who? myself Who? that this book, Quran, is from God? <laughs> what do I need? I need emotional justification for our belief? Of course not. Because emotionally speaking, my brother, emotionally speaking, you can believe in a rapt God or a might God. You can believe and worship that God by emotion. Some people emotionally, now hear this carefully, some people emotionally worship other human beings, don't they? Some people worship a person called Krishna, the black person. Some people worship someone called Jesus or Yeshua or Jesus or Isa, same person, who is a Palestinian. Imagine worshipping a Palestinian. A simple this is all done by emotions. What we Muslims are reminding you to come back to the worship of no and nothing of the creation but to the Creator alone. Now I open the floor to any questions that you may have and I will try as best as I can to answer. Even if I can't, I'll find someone who can answer your questions. By this man. Don't be yes. deceived by Can you pass this, this mic to the brother, please? Who is this man over here? Is he Muslim? Shaitan. The question for those who didn't hear because you put mics on my belt rather than to you. The friend here wants to know who is this gentleman who has been heckling throughout. Is he a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? No, he's a Hashalim. Are you a Muslim? Do I look like a Muslim? Do I look like a Muslim? Can you answer it directly? Are you a Muslim? Do I look like a Muslim? No. Let me tell you. Are you a Muslim? Okay. Let me tell you who Muslims are. Okay. So now, the, Muslims the question, the question you asked, I wanted to tell him, uh, sorry, ask him to answer from his own mouth, rather than me imposing my presuppositions on his belief. That's why I asked him. He's not a Muslim. He is a Christian that comes to speak a corner for a number of years, and if you number of years Allah and if you watch speakers God. corner videos you will see Muslim. he's heckling most of us i'm not sure look with all sincerity i can tell you i am not sure whether he's paid to do that because instead of preaching his religion he comes to muslim speakers and they heckle every no, speech that I'm we want to get you. yeah I'm so whether he's been paid no, are you paid by the way question. are you paid i'm answering your question he's not going to answer any other questions? I'm answering your question because you are deceiving. You are deceiving innocent people. You are deceiving right. innocent people by saying that Quran says this, Quran now, says this, Quran says this, whereas Quran is satanic book saying nothing about humanity. Right. Is there anyone else? Do you have a question for me? Muhammad is not what I said so far. What I've said so far, do you think it makes sense? Jesus is the best example. Do you consider that there has to be a creator of this universe? A creator of this universe. Do you also consider that this creator has to be absolute and perfect? A moral person with his own adopted. So a creator who is absolute and perfect. Can there be more than one? Absolutely not. So there is one creator. 
who is absolute and perfect. So this is what we Muslims are calling for, that we should humble ourselves, surrender our will to the will of this absolute perfect creator. Because who knows more, who knows us more than our creator? No one. So if our creator has created us for a reason, excuse me, can you tell him I'm not to engage? Brother, Otroko, can, can you, excuse me, sorry, um, can you both behave? Can you both behave? Right. Listen carefully. Can you both behave, please? Don't act like children. Right. So it is reasonable to submit and surrender our will to the will of our Creator. Isn't that the case, uh, my sister in humanity? It is reasonable to submit ourselves to the will of our Creator because He knows what's best for us. That is what we say that the Creator sends revelation, sends revelation in the form of books by raising prophets and messengers to guide us. And the Quran is not the first revelation from God, it is the last one. So we are saying the Quran is telling us how to live our life, to be patient, not to mock and ridicule, to be, to be reasonable people. We are told to be ummat and wasata, middle nation, not to go into that extreme or this extreme. Extremism both ways is not good. Middle part. So we need to Law, we need to be on the middle path, and Islam is that middle path, a path which tends worship none but this true God, and the way you worship is by following the messenger, and the messenger who has been sent, finally, the final messenger is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Today, of course, I haven't talked about how to verify Prophet Muhammad as the final prophet and messenger. That is the plan, inshallah, God willing, for the next weeks to come. When I'm going to take this theme further and give reasons and arguments and evidence why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the prophet and messenger of God. But as we have now demonstrated, as we have now demonstrated, you have done that the very right thing. Islam is a universal religion. Right Islam is a universal way of life which is attainable oh, universally. Oh, Even if you were, you and I, if you were born in an Amazonian jungle 5,000 years ago, where there were no Christian missionaries and hecklers there, right? We are left with our devices of intellect to understand the reality. You and I will definitely, if we used our intellect properly, we are for sure guaranteed to come to the conclusion that there is a creator of this universe and that creator is free from all imperfections, free from weaknesses and has to be absolute. And that creator has also been one. So even back then, 5,000 years ago in a Brazilian jungle, you can come to the conclusion that there is one creator. And you will also come to the conclusion so that we, by so ourselves, cannot guide ourselves to the true reality. The but one who can do that is our Creator. So once we acknowledge this fact, God will definitely take this into account and He will not punish us. In fact, this is the message of the Quran. God does not punish a nation until a warner has been sent to them. This is the justice of the God of Islam, or the God of the reality. God is just that he is not going to punish any nation until a prophet, a warner, a messenger came to them. 
but also God, Allah tells us in the Quran, not a nation has passed that has not received a prophet, a messenger, or warner. Every nation had a prophet or a messenger. That is why you see, even if you go to find out the ancient tribal religion and you explore their belief system, you will see even those people's brother who was the prophet in India? Who was the prophet in India? Can you answer me? Can you answer me? Who was the prophet in India? Who was the prophet in India? When Allah is saying every every nation has a prophet, which, which, which prophet? Which prophet was in India? Which Muslim prophet was in India? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Excuse me. You tell him to be God. Uh, I am proud of God. Can you switch I my... Um, I am a child. I am a Switch it on, switch it on. Allah Akbar! At the top, at the top. Allah Akbar! Muslim Allah prophet here. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Uh, excuse me. Um, and does the, does right. the Indian know um, Arabic language? Does the Indian know Arabic language? No. It's very difficult now. He's not able to have a conversation. Why are you shouting? Why are you not happy? Why are you not happy? So Quran is a fail of saying this. I can't hear you. Quran is a fail of saying all these things. I mean, as I said, we can't just, um, you know, assume things. But it is possible because when the church has seen the, the rise of Islam, especially from Speaker's Corner. No, no, what I'm, what I'm saying, and my assumption could be totally baseless, right? As I said, I could be totally wrong. The church has implanted many people here to heckle the Muslims so that people can hear Islam. Because here now, what's happening is this. We have a platform in which we can take it to a wider audience through YouTube. And because of this, people are thinking about Islam and they're reflecting on it. They're questioning Christianity and other religions, right? The Christian church, this is my humble hypothesis, and I, be, I be, can be totally wrong, they don't want that to happen. So they have employed, possibly, some people to heckle. I mean, am I going to go? Like, imagine you're talking about humanism and I'm gonna heckle every time. Speaker's Corner is a platform for you to talk. Yeah, but you know what? This is sure. Every time you've had a point to make, and it's a good point, he interrupts with sound. That's all it is. Yes. He has no point. That is, that is his purpose. So, whether he's getting. He doesn't want you to get your message. That's what I'm saying. The reason why he's coming here is to interrupt our message to be heard by people. So, there are quite a few of them. He's unfortunately one of them. He is always with me. Right? Oh, he's always with me. So if you, well, I hope he thinks so. <laughs> anyway, so as I was saying, um, you believe in a creator, you believe God is one, you believe God should be worshipped alone. I'm the happy. How much do you know of Prophet Muhammad? Are you Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You don't have any convincing to do here, my friend. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We're just here to um, engage in. Uh, Debate. Fair enough. Fair enough. So what we try to do as best as we can is to sort of give that spark to people to think and reflect. And let the people do the thinking. But we can't think for them, can we? Can you think for them?